Hey Falcon fans, I'm Thomas Moth. Welcome to Atlanta Falcons Today. We're going to jump into Falcons news and rumors here on a Tuesday. First, a couple days away from Thanksgiving, Turkey Day. What's your favorite part of the turkey? Are you even a turkey fan? I'm not a massive turkey fan, but in terms of white meat or dark meat, I am a white meat guy for sure. If you're a white meat guy, type W down below for white. Or if you like that dark meat, type D down below for dark. Let's see what you guys are thinking about here as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving. Uh, let's jump in the latest Falcons news and rumors, as we mentioned at the top of the video. And uh, we begin with, I guess, the bad news. And that is that there is no news in terms of the Calvin Ridley update, based on what Arthur Smith had to say in his Monday press conference, getting ready for Jaguar week, as we are officially facing the Jaguars on Sunday. And so naturally, the question came Monday morning, I think, during the press conference up there at Flowery Branch. Is there an update on Calvin Ridley? Arthur Smith said no, zero update on Calvin Ridley, despite the fact that the Jaguar game is technically the first game he would be eligible to go ahead and play, because he was on the short-term IR, so that's three games, so you do the math, and the Jaguar game would be the first game that he'd be eligible to go ahead and play, and so with Ridley continuing to be out, I mean, this was kind of the week I was circling to see if he would come back. I was hoping that he would. The Falcons desperately need him back out there. It does seem like he's not coming back anytime soon, and this was my fear three weeks ago, is that it might not be a short-term thing. It could be a long-term thing. It's seeming like it is going to be a long-term thing. Now, Pro Football Talk has a good write-up on this. I think we'll go ahead and throw that quote up on the screen right now just to break it off further down. Quote, Ridley played the first four games of the season. Then took one game off for what was termed personal reasons. Then returned for one game for walking away while issuing a statement saying he needed to focus on his mental health. A first-round pick in 2018. Really had a breakout season in 2020 with 90 catches for uh, 1,374 yards, end quote. And he has been nowhere near as productive the past couple, of, or this season, as he has been uh, the past couple of seasons. Now, again, we mentioned this many, many times, and again, the update is that there is no update, but they desperately do need him back. And I really hope that Calvin Ridley is working out uh, all the issues off the football field, all the personal issues, and he can come back 100%. But he needs to come back sooner rather than later from a football perspective, because as we've seen, the wide receiver depth chart, it's so bleak right now. I mean, there just isn't a legit receiver on this team not named Kyle Pitts. And defenses are very, very, very easy in terms of figuring out what to do when you play the Falcons. That is, get pressure on Matt Ryan. Don't worry about the running game because the Falcons can't run block or run the football. And then double Kyle Pitts because these receivers on your screen are no good. I mean, Russell Gage is the best receiver on this roster, and he's not even he's, – he's really a number three. And like any other, you know, current roster right now in the National Football League, he'd be a three, maybe a two on some of the lesser rosters. And right now, he's their number one wide receiver. No one else in this – uh, receiving core is actually produce, producing on any sort of level. Tajay Sharp every now and then, but again, he's more of like a four on an actual NFL roster. And so while Ridley remains out, the pressure remains on the rest of the receivers as well as uh, Arthur Smith and Matt Ryan to find a way to make this offense actually go as they've been completely unable to move the football, especially since Ridley uh, went ahead and left three, four weeks ago. They had that one nice week against the Saints, and since then, three points in eight quarters. It has been rough. And so bad news again to start the video, and that is that no Kevin Ridley for the foreseeable future, at least not going to happen on Sunday. Add break, pin comment down below. Answer this question. I think this is a serious topic and a serious question I want to ask you guys. Will the Falcons be drafting a wide receiver next year? Like, do you think the Falcons are going to have to go ahead and spend a, you know, first, second, third, fourth round draft pick on a wide receiver? If you do, type Y down below for yes. If you do not, go ahead and type N down below for no. Now, moving on to another player who is playing right now, unlike Calvin Ridley, but is not playing well. We must talk about Caleb McGarry and the decline that we have seen before our very eyes. And I don't know necessarily it's that big of a decline. He just hasn't been good since being a first-round draft pick. Falcons traded up to grab him a couple of years ago. With the Falcons offense scoring three points, like we said, the past eight quarters, the offensive line is very much under pressure and under scrutiny. I mean, they are not giving Matt Ryan any sort of protection. They're providing all sorts of pressure. They can't run block. I mean, it's gotten so bad that media members here in Atlanta, people that I know and actually have worked with, are, are, are ripping Caleb McGarry, and I'll show you that quote here in just one second. The crazy stat, though, you see it on your screen, Matt Ryan has been hit or sacked eight times, or was hit or sacked eight times against the New England Patriots. Like, that is an insane amount of sacks, and a lot of them came from the right side. If you watch the film, Caleb McGarry has been, I mean, just brutal. It has not been good. Um, I want to throw up a quote right now from 92 on the Games, Jarvis Davis. He's their lead Falcon reporter, co-worker of mine, big fan of Jarvis. He had a fascinating take uh, on one of the midday shows here in Atlanta regarding Caleb McGarry. Throw it up right now. Quote, I want to call for somebody's job. I've never done that before. We all know who Caleb McGarry is as far as on the field. We know exactly what he is on the field. There was something I saw going back and watching the, the game, and it kind of really just bothered me. Like, I almost got to the point where I wanted to fight. 
He would go on to say, quote, it was the end of the second quarter and Matthew Judon had sacked Matt Ryan. He's on the ground. Kelly McGray looks at Matt Ryan on the ground, turns his back on him, adjusts his shoulder pads, and just stands there as if he is ready for the next play, end quote. And Jarvis continued to go on. I mean, this was a, a, a very impressive rant, and I, I remember seeing that play as well. I'll give you my thoughts on that and uh, McGarry as a whole here in just one second, though. First, we are literally just a couple of hundred subscribers away, really just like 54, 60 subscribers away from 4K subs. So if you guys want to give us a Thanksgiving gift, you can go ahead and go to below and subscribe. It's free, and it gives you guys access to all of our latest videos inside your subscription box as soon as they are uh, dropped here on the channel. If you want to stay up to date on the Falcons, go down below and hit that red subscribe button and give us a little turkey day gift, hopefully by Thursday, of 4K subs. But the bosses would appreciate it, and that means I would appreciate it as well. So go down below and subscribe. Now, Jeffrey Davis is 100% right. I mean, Caleb McGarry has been getting beat week in and week out. And honestly, I'm starting to think he, he's become a bust. I think we are looking at a first-round absolute bust by the previous regime of Thomas Dimitrov uh, and Dan Quinn. I remember being uh, on the air talking about the NFL draft, what, was it two drafts ago, three drafts ago now? And they drafted Caleb McGarry in the early teens. And I said, okay, that's a need at right guard. Then they traded up to go ahead and take, uh, or sorry, they took Chris Lindstrom in the teens. Then they traded up for Caleb McGarry. And I was like, this is, this is a good move because now you have the right side of the offensive line secured for many years to come. And yet, a couple of years later, we are now looking at McGarry being a bust and the Falcons needing to draft another offensive lineman early on in next year's draft. Like, the idea that Jalen Mayfield is going to swing over to right tackle is a nice idea, but you got to fill the hole that is sitting there with Jalen Mayfield, right? Is Matt Gono going to come back and actually be a starting offensive lineman in 2022? I don't know. And so, much like with the Calvin Ridley situation, this is very similar, to, except for the fact that McGarry is actually playing, in that these are two positions we did not think the Falcons would have to spend early draft picks on in 2022, and yet add it to the list. You know, you need another cornerback, you need another pass rusher, now you need an offensive lineman, you need a wide receiver, you need a running back. Like, the list is getting very, very long, and they only have so many early draft picks, you know, one each round. And so, oh, man, it's not looking good. It is not looking good, and McGarry's been playing terrible. And if he continues to struggle, he might need to be benched. And I'll ask you guys that question here as we roll on. Should Caleb McGarry be benched? I think he should. Type 1 down below for yes. Uh, if you think he should not be benched, type 2 down below. Sorry, 1 below, down below for yes, 2 down below uh, for no. Now, before we go ahead and move on to the Jaguar matchup here, quick shout-out to our friends uh, in terms of this incredible Falcons hoodie that is 50% off right now. And you see it on your screen right now when you use our link, chatsports.com forward slash Falcons hoodies. There are a lot of Black Friday deals that are going on. This is my current favorite Falcons one because the weather in Atlanta is getting very, very cold. And I could use a hoodie. You guys could use a hoodie as well. And this one just looks sick. I mean, this is a great Dirty Birds hoodie. Maybe even a Christmas gift for a special someone in your life. It is 50% off. Again, you see the link on the screen. Link down below in the description box, chatsports.com for us Falcon hoodie. Go ahead and pick yourself up one of these. Check out all the other stuff that's happening there uh, at the link. Again, crazy good discount. 50% off. Jump on the hoodie right now because you need to wear it while it's cold. Don't buy it and then, oh, you know, you only use it in a couple of weeks. Buy it early and then you can go ahead and wear it for the rest of the summer. Also, I want to quickly mention my picks of the week from week 11. I want to quickly show how I did as I am now uh, in the red as we've been struggling the past couple of weeks. But I did win three of the five, right? So Colton Bills took the under. That was a poor mistake because there was a lot of scoring, even though it was rainy. Like, thanks, Jonathan Taylor. Eagles minus one of the Saints. That was a win. Packers minus two and a half. That was disappointing. Oh, man, I thought they had that one. Bengals and Raiders, that was a win. Cardinals, Seahawks, that was a win. So we at least won three of five, but still struggling a little bit on my bets of the week. But I want to update you guys. We always talk about bets of the week here uh, going into each Sunday. I'll have more bets later on this week. All right, finally, we wrap it up with Falcons-Jaguars. Obviously, it should be a favorable matchup for the Atlanta Falcons. And yet, at the same time, how much uh, confidence do you have in Atlanta going into this game? Now, Cordero Patterson is expected to go ahead and play. That should help out. Atlanta's offense has been anemic without him, whether he's the reason or not. Jaguar, the Jaguar defense and offense, I mean, this is a bad football team. Like, they should be able to go to Jacksonville and win. It's not at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. They've struggled historically this year at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. So all signs are pointing to a win for the Falcons. But again, this is not a guaranteed win when you're talking about the Atlanta Falcon offense that has scored three points in eight quarters. But it is a must-win if you want to stay alive in the playoff uh, race because, as we've talked about, the Falcons cannot afford to keep losing because other teams are winning. Philadelphia won last week. The Vikings won last week. The 49ers won last week. These are all playoff teams battling for the 6th and 7th wildcard slots right now in the NFC. So with that being said, here's your Week 12 playoff rooting guide because you watch the Falcons on Sunday, but also need to know who to root for in order to help the Falcons out if they were to win. Definitely root Bills over the Saints. You want that one uh, big time. Got to root for the Bills to win. Root for the Giants to go ahead and beat the Eagles. The Giants losing on Monday Night Football basically eliminates them, but Philadelphia is rising. Root for the Dolphins against the Panthers because Carolina is still very much alive, even though they lost to the Washington football team. Root for the 49ers against the Vikings, because the Vikings are playing good football right now, and I think more of a threat for the playoffs uh, than the 49ers. And then root for the Seahawks at Washington, because Washington is now looming kind of at a four-win team right around Atlanta, uh, trying to go ahead and get into the postseason. So there's your rooting guide, uh, of course, while you're watching the Falcons 
hopefully beat the Jaguars or lose the Jaguars. Either way, those are the other games to keep an eye on as we get closer and closer to the postseason. All right, ultimate, all the time we have for today on our Atlanta Falcons news and rumor video. Plenty more videos upcoming here as the days and weeks go by. So make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Help us get to the magical 4K sub uh, limit, or not limit, 4K sub little barrier here. We've been trying to patch for the past couple of weeks. So we'll stop going below and subscribe. Ultimate for today, again, on today's video, I'm Thomas Mott signing off. Enjoy the week with the family. Enjoy the week at Thanksgiving. Be thankful for where you guys are at, uh, regardless of your situation, because we are all grateful to be uh, in the land of the free. Again, I'm Thomas Mott signing off to the rest of your day.